Hey everyone, welcome back. If you're just now tuning in, we had two videos prior to this. First one, we went over the revenue estimates. Feel free to check that out. I'll link it below in the description. Second one, we go over how we're um, calculating our operating expenses for the model. And now in this third one, we're going to link it up and see what kind of valuation we get. So first thing, let's link up the revenues. So if we go back to our revenue estimate tab, we have a consolidated uh, revenue number right here. And we'll just should be able to just copy that across. And then on our operating expenses, we're going to have a consolidated OPEX number if we come to the bottom here. So for OPEX, uh, or for COG, sorry, um, we're going to go with our cost of sales plus our fulfillment costs. And we'll copy that across. Now for technology and content, we have that one broken out. So we'll go through there. Um, I'm ignoring, you'll see, there's this like very tiny other income expense and I have it going to zero. So I'm just gonna ignore it for the sake of uh, this model. Copy that across. And then now the last piece here really is the DNA, um, which we can actually just link up here. There we go. Link that across, oops. And then that's actually linked back, so that doesn't quite work. Um, let me see. Depreciation. If we can link it up there. That should work. There we go. So now the model is built out. Everything kind of flows through, and you know, high level, we'll talk quickly what's going on. Um, and here's kind of high level summaries, right? So we have growth going from 40% off of a COVID year back to more kind of neutral growth at 20%. Um, so back to that and then kind of trailing down. This has total sales going from about 400 billion to 1.1 trillion. So about tripling in the next decade. Kind of the basis here is we looked at some market um, market data that said, you know, cloud computing expected to grow at about 17 and a half percent. So we used that on the AWS portion of the business. Then we kind of looked at Walmart, right? Walmart has 555 billion of sales. Um, and I think we end up getting up to about like 900 billion of this. Let me check. Um, would be online stores, physical third third party, and subscription services. So you have a 920 billion. So about twice as big as what Walmart's doing currently. Um, so it, it seems reasonable that their e-commerce portion could get that big. Um, and then we forecast out their operating expenses. And if we look down here, right, we'll see marketing as a percent of sales slowly improving. And I think that's just as they get bigger and revenue scales, right, they will have efficiencies. Marketing expense won't be as much. Um, assumed a similar thing for GNA, even though you can't really tell it here. Um, it's, you know, very, very small when you remove the, the rounding there, um, but slight improvement there. And then technology, this was a, a tricky one it's like technology and content. The assumption here is that if they continue with Amazon Prime and acquiring rights to all these things and developing products, like this actually might go up a little bit um, in the short term, right? So we'll, we can see that it was actually down this year is 11.1% in 2020. So kind of having that rebound and then get back to kind of the historical levels and sit steady just because, you know, as that revenue stream grows, they have to invest more and more, create more original content. Um, more te technology needs, things of that nature. I think that was the one that kind of made sense to hold constant um, after it kind of rebounds post COVID. From there, capital expenditures, right? Um, 6%, I just put this back in line with historical. It looks like maybe they accelerated some CapEx during COVID because they had the ability maybe to repair a lot of offices with everyone out of them, things like that. So having this kind of go back down to 6% um, depreciation, 80%, that's my standard assumption. And then stock-based comp has historically been at 2%. So left that flat. Working capital, I'm not a big fan of having working capital be a big driver of your cash flow. And it looks like in 2020, it was a big driver. And that's just, uh, you see the current liabilities just shot up and their assets stayed about the same. So their accounts payable really skyrocketed um, while their accounts receivable stayed relatively flat. So you know, I've just kind of held this constant to this year, so it kind of minimizes the impact, really, um, even though they still see pretty good, from that standpoint, pretty good um, cash flow from working capital, which as being, I would expect Amazon, Walmart, you know, these big retailers be able to do that because they can 
basically they can tell their people like, hey, um, look, I get six months to pay you and like it or not, like I have six months to pay you. And then on this side of things, it's like, hey, you have 30 days to pay me. Like I would expect those kind of things to, to stay with a company the size of Amazon. The WAC, 8.6%. This actually comes from, um, I did a WAC video. I'll link that below as well. Feel free to check that out. But this is their weighted average cost of capital, right? Um, based off CAPM and the WAC formula. So take it or leave it. But, you know, it seems reasonable. I don't think Amazon is this like super risky company anymore at this point. Um, definitely risk that they continue performing AWS, but not anything super, super crazy. Um, and, you know, based off this, you get about a $1.2 billion valuation or 1.2 trillion. If we look at their current market cap, they are trading at, I want to say 1.6. Um, so, you know, we're definitely off. With that said, I think if we look at our sensitivity, right, if you, you know, assume a little bit lower, let's see. Um, a little bit lower discount rate, you know, if you think they're not quite as risky, right, you get there. Um, so, I mean, the WAC really sensitizes this when we're looking at numbers this large. And then also if you just kind of, you know, if you if you really think it's this 8.6%, right, then you could always come here and you could say, you know, they're going to grow actually a little bit quicker. If you give them a 4%, right, I mean, still a little off, but not too far. Um, so, I don't know, I think we're, we're in the ballpark with these numbers, I think. Um, there might be some more room for margin improvement. I think kind of looking at the different lines of businesses, if we had a better way to parse out the actual margins for all these other aspects of the business, right? Like online sales stores versus physical versus third-party seller services. We unfortunately don't get the margin profiles for these, but if we had them, um, and same with subscription services, I think you could understand a little bit better of how these margins are going to change over time. And, you know, with a little bit of a margin improvement, you're going to be at the 1.6 with these assumptions um, without a doubt. So, I mean, right. I think even if you put like an 8% whack in here, you probably get, yeah, you're, you're pretty close. Right. And then you're at, right. And you throw this three, five. So I, I think we're in the ballpark of realistic assumptions of their current share price. Now the question is, can they improve margins above and beyond that? Or can their cloud revenue not just grow at the same rate as the broader cloud market, which is what we've basically assumed here, but can they take market share? And if those things are true, right, then you could make the argument that they are potentially um, undervalued um, or, you know, maybe fairly valued. So I, I think, you know, Amazon's an interesting company. They're a big company with a lot of different business lines. So it's hard to really get a good grasp on it, but... You know, this isn't one of the more ridiculous looking things I've seen. And, you know, I, I recently made a video on looking at comparable metrics for them. And let me let me open up that spreadsheet real quick. Um, if we open that up, we can look at cap IQ estimates. And I think cap IQ estimates are probably a little bit higher. So if we go to Amazon here, right, and we look at 2021, so 2020 EBITDA, they have 48 billion. Just to like baseline 48 billion, we, we get a very similar EBITDA off our calculation. I think, right, there's this 48,150 or is this 48,075, we're $75 million off, not bad. 2021, they have 75 billion, we have 53. So is there this assumption that this 38% growth is gonna continue next year? I think, you know, maybe we see higher growth than 16%. Maybe I'm being conservative. And then 93 by uh, FY22. And we are at 62. So they definitely have more aggressive assumptions um, on cap IQ at least. But I think if we look at, you know, some competitors here, right? Let's see, like Alibaba, um, EBITDA going from, what is this, 23 billion to 31 billion. 
to 32 billion. So not quite, you know, I mean, that's as crazy of a growth, but from 2021, 2022, not quite as crazy. Alphabet, I mean, that's pretty crazy. They have them doubling here. Um, Microsoft, you know, just slow and steady growth. If we were like Walmart's, right? Like Walmart is actually expected to go down, which I think is reflective of the retail portion of the businesses, which is kind of what I was getting at in my video JD though. They do have growing, but it is much smaller. And then eBay, um, slow steady growth. So right, Walmart boomed due to COVID through online sales and then also just in-store sales of people hoarding supplies. Um, so right, that's kind of reversing back down. So it makes me question how they get these Amazon margins doubling, like, right, like the cloud business isn't that big. Um, so you're saying there's just gonna be massive cost improvements or cloud is just gonna take off like weeds because if if Walmart is expected to de decrease in their e-commerce or like retail, right, then I would expect the same thing here. And if we just look at like top line revenue numbers, right, um, 420 billion, what do we have? 386, so theirs is looking LTM, um, so a little bit different, but for 21, they have 489, it's about 50 million more. Um, and then FY22, they have 576 and we have 511. So they're definitely expecting a little bit higher top line growth. So if you kind of went with those street consensus, I think, you know, with our margin improvements, this model would 100% hit the $1.6 trillion valuation. Not a doubt in my mind. Um, but I'll link the model below. Feel free to download it and poke around. Um, and yeah, let me know if you have any questions or thoughts. Definitely an interesting company. Um, you know, I think if you can find a, a good time where there's a pullback and get in closer to, you know, one, two, one, three, um, could definitely be a, a really interesting thing. Cause I think Amazon's here to stay, not going anywhere. And I think in the cloud space and with their e-commerce, they, uh, have a good spot in the market. So yeah, let me know if you have any questions or comments and I'll get back to you. Thanks so much for watching today.